Here we go. I believe we are live. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hi, hello. everyone. Hello, hello. Hopefully you guys can hear us. Let us know in the chat if you can hear us, if you can see us, that we're live. And yes, so um, today's a bit of a, a more casual webinar. We're just going to be here answering your questions. Okay, awesome. Yes, so we see you guys can hear us. Thank you. Um, and yeah, we've got uh, myself, Danny, we've got Phil, and we've got James here today moderating. Uh, so we're going to be yeah, answering your questions today. And, and the format of this is pretty casual again. Um, what we're going to be asking you guys to do is to just put your questions into the chat. We've got James here moderating, so he's going to be looking over our chat and making sure that Phil and I uh, see your questions. Um, depending on how things go, we might not be able to answer all of the questions today, um, and that's okay. We hopefully have your email address. If you've joined the webinar with your actual email address, we'll be able to follow up with you with uh, uh, any questions that we don't uh, have a chance to answer. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I guess before we get into all the questions or anything, just want to give a quick shout out and reminder that uh, we, we try and host these uh, webinars at least kind of once a month. Um, we have a, another one coming up next month where we will be actually bringing on our hardware specialist and hardware manager who's going to talk about the Smart Scanner 3, which you can see a little quick sneak peek of it here. This is our third iteration of it. Um, still Android, running our cool um, mobile app that you can do everything on it, but uh, a bit faster, uh, I think better battery, um, all the kind of upgrades you would expect from a newer device. So uh, we're going to be going over that. I believe pre-orders are live for it now, and they maybe begin shipping at the end of the month. So who knows? Uh, uh, you can definitely take a look, just uh, infloshopthere.com for more information. And uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, so we are all here, Danny, James, myself, we are here to answer your questions. Uh, so if you want to put anything in the chat, we will do our best to uh, to try and help you. Um, if you do come up with anything that, that is maybe a little too specific or too sensitive or anything like that with your information, we will have your email and everything. We can definitely reach back out to you uh, and get in touch with our support team and everything too. So um, yeah. And oh, actually, I see while, them. Um, yeah, so the questions are coming in. And, and just uh, before we start as well, just a quick plug here for our knowledge base. If you ever need help, uh, you can also find a lot of answers on our support knowledge base on our website. Um, we also have an awesome support team that Phil's a part of. Um, and you can always reach out uh, Monday to Friday um, over chat, uh, email. Um, so yeah, absolutely know that you guys are supported, um, and so this isn't the only chance you have to uh, to ask us questions. Um, but yeah. yeah, let's take a look. I think this one's for you, Phil. Cool. So uh, <laughs> yeah, if anyone has reached out about API stuff, I am the the resident uh, API person on the support team. So hopefully, I can answer this. It says uh, from Manuel, what API integrations do you have that you can help us as wholesale distributors? And then any built-in features we can use to better manage our inventory. And how can we set up the system to use barcodes and the different types like box, carton packs? Those are some definitely great questions. Um, so, I mean, in terms of integrations right now, we integrate with uh, WooCommerce, Squarespace, uh, QuickBooks, Xero. Um, we do technically um, integrate with Shopify, but we're having a little uh, issue with their app status right now. So um, we'll, we'll be getting that fixed in the, the very near future. Um, and then I guess the biggest one would be Cart Rover would be the other one that lets us connect to lots of different platforms out there since we can't make an integration for every single um, specific uh, integration or company out there or anything like that. So Cart Rover is actually one that lets you uh, almost work as a middleman. So you can have your own system or anything like that where it will then send the information to Cart Rover and Cart Rover can then send the information to Inflow. Um, so we do have knowledge base articles on all of those different um, integrations. So it really just depends on, I guess, what you're kind of using uh, already. Uh, and then pretty much any of those will then help sync with Inflow. You can kind of push your inventory levels. You can sync your sales orders um, as well as purchase orders, things like that. So um, just with some of the integrations, they will have different features available than 
that other ones kind of thing. So um, we do have all that on the knowledge base, so you can definitely take a look at that. Um, so then built-in features to better manage inventory and warehouse process. Um, so I'm not sure if you've seen, we do have a, uh, just pulling up our Windows app here kind of thing, but we do have an add-on that you can do for like work orders. So this is something where you can actually create um, products if that's part of like your actual business or anything like that. Um, this works off of using your products themselves. You can actually set like a bill of materials. So this is something where you would actually add in all the pieces of something that you need to create it. Um, and then when you want to actually manufacture, it'll take out all these different things, calculate the cost based off of that, and uh, essentially deduct these quantities while increasing your, your finished products quantity. Um, so hopefully that would be something that might help with the, like a warehouse process. Um, and then how can we set up the system to use barcodes? Um, Unfortunately, at this point, when you're using a barcode, we don't have a way of specifying it to different unit types like box, carton, packs, or anything like that. Um, you can put multiple barcodes in in the field. So, like if I had a barcode one, two, three, four, five, I could type. I can't type. Um, you can put a comma, and then you could put like six, seven, eight, nine, or anything like that. And Inflow will be able to recognize that they're separate barcodes and, and if either one is scanned, it'll pull up that product. Um, again, that doesn't help with the, the number of pieces. So the only way you could really get around that, uh, which would be kind of like a workaround, would be if you wanted to create, you could have your normal product, which is like your individual one. You could create a second one that's like boxes or something like that. Um, and then each one could have their own individual barcode. Um, the only drawback with something like this is then there's no way of linking the products themselves. So they're going to be separate, which means you'll have separate inventory quantities for each one. Um, and if you say, for instance, take the things out of the boxes to like an individual level, you'd have to actually adjust that stock manually. So you'd say, I'm removing one box and if it has five inside, increasing five of the other product or anything like that. Um, but that is great feedback, and we will definitely uh, record that and pass it along to our team because, again, we, we use these kinds of things to try and plan out future features and stuff like that as well, too. So great questions, Emmanuel. Cool. And I think we've got another one from Matt here. And um, funny you should ask this. I wonder if you've been in touch with our support team already. But um, this is a great question here. So um, it has to do with um, our Easy Post integration. So we do integrate with Easy Post. Um, if you'd like to learn more, um, you can uh, check uh, uh, check out our uh, knowledge base article on it. But um, if you want to quickly print shipping labels from Inflow, you can do that with our Easy Post integration. Um, so yeah, you can learn more about that on our website. Uh, but the question here is. Under shipping and save parcel size, there is a list of boxes entered. How are they sorted? Um, so that's a great question right now, actually. It's not sorted in any way. Um, so if that's something, and I'm sure, yep, it's something you do want to see maybe <laughs> alphabetically or alphanumerically, um, what we're gonna do is take that feedback uh, back to our product team um, and log that. So thank you for asking this. Right now, the, uh, there is no sort order. Um, so. Yep, unfortunately. Um, hopefully that helps answer that. And, um, and you can just kind of see in here too, like oh yeah. the, this, this is how I added mine. So I had normal box and medium flat rate box. So as she's saying, it just saves it kind of the, the way that you added it, so. Yes, but yeah, we'll, we'll take that back to the team. Uh, all right, and then Anne has a question here. So we have inflow on premise. What is the end of life plan? So Phil, I think you might know this better than me. Um, yeah, I mean, essentially the, the way it's kind of working is that um, we are sunsetting on premise. Um, so essentially what that means is we will stop selling it. Um, we have kind of moved all of our development over to Inflow Cloud for the past couple of years already. So there, there haven't been any updates or anything to on premise. Um, we're not 
stopping the the program essentially itself or anything like that um, again we won't be selling it um, and we will have steps that we're going to send out to everyone that if they want to continue using on premise that there's a way that you can use it um, completely offline so that it doesn't uh, rely on checking for like licenses off of our servers or anything like that um, but uh, but yeah and I mean we're sending out as much information as possible um, so giving as much warning and everything like that too so the program itself will continue Continue to work it's just it's not going to be available anymore and you will have to take some specific steps to 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 make it work offline essentially um, and again we can follow up with you and give you even more information on that like specifically and like those kinds of steps as well too um, and we will be again emailing that out to all of our on-premise customers um, closer to the time as well cool. And yeah, so uh, the next question here we have from Jason. So when you push a purchase order, is there a way on the dashboard to confirm it has been sent and what date? So I think on the web, um, and, and by sent, um, I'm wondering if, if you mean by email, uh, emailed. Um, but just quickly, um, from the desktop app, um, what you can do is uh, there is a version history on the desktop app. This isn't available uh, yet on the web um, or mobile apps yet, um, but this is a great uh, way to tell when the last uh, changes were made to a purchase order um, or sorry, to any sort of uh, transaction sales order or even product. Um, so if any user was logged in and made a change, you'll be able to see the modified date uh, which user made those changes. Um, it won't tell you the exact changes that were made, but what you can do is you can preview previous versions uh, to see what they look like before. So you'd be able to tell at what point that purchase order was um, marked as fulfilled, let's say, um, or received. Uh, but in terms of the email, um, there isn't, uh, what you can do is actually set up a, uh, I think it's the BCC. Um, so. Uh, right now, when you email a purchase order or any document, say a sales order invoice, um, there isn't a, a direct, like it doesn't tell you uh, that the email was sent. Um, but what you can do is set yourself as the default BCC so that you also receive a copy of that purchase order. So uh, you'd be able to um, keep track of what's been sent that way. So that's that's our recommendation there. Uh, you can set up the default BCC in your email settings from the desktop app or in the web app as well that'll just be in your personal settings um yeah yeah, so yeah so... <laughs> sorry yeah go ahead Danny. <laughs> no 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 i was saying you, you're you're demoing it right now so that's that's perfect yeah so. so just under your personal settings and you can set a default ccc or bcc um, on there, just like Danny was saying, so you can get a copy of that email. Um, and then just to, to point out, as she was mentioning with the version history, essentially when you do look at it, um, if you double click on any of these, it will then load up what that version essentially looked like. So if I go all the way to my oldest one, it's unfulfilled, unpaid. Uh, if I go to the next one, I can see that it was then fulfilled. Uh, and then my current one, it was also paid. So um, unfortunately, it doesn't highlight these changes for you. So you do have to kind of do a little bit of investigative uh, work, kind of pay attention to the different fields and stuff like that to see. But um, that is definitely a cool tool to uh, be able to see what has changed. And also, it does log um, who made the change again. So as long as all your team members have their own unique login and stuff, you can see, um, oh, Danny made this change, or oh, Phil did this change kind of thing. And, uh, and then you can always follow up with them as well, too. So yeah. Um, I think the next one was from Mark, who was asking what updates and features are planned. Um, actually, I, if I can find the link, we actually do have a um, roadmap that we do have posted, uh, which I will just pull up here. Just on our main marketing site, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so this, this here actually has a few different 
um, sections here kind of thing. So we've got under consideration. So these are things that people have requested that we're kind of um, thinking about. And the more people vote for any of these kinds of things, kind of the higher up it gets pushed on the list. Um, then we have actual planned things. So um, I know some of like the projects that are working, people are working on right now is like creating and viewing work orders on the web app, which I know is a, a big thing, especially for like our Mac users and everything that, that don't have access to the Windows apps. So that would be a great thing. Um, again, like the, the order and movement history of uh, views in the web app, um, count sheets, like all those kinds of things. A, a big focus this year has been trying to bring those missing features to our web app so that they're kind of more in sync with each other. So um, those are definitely some things on the list um, as well. I saw somebody, the next person actually, Eric had asked, uh, if there's been any progress with the support for wireless shipping label printers. That's actually another project that we have currently going on where we're right now, currently our label printing only supports Dymo, um, which if you did have, Dymo does have a wireless 450, but the they are essentially um, discontinued from Dymo. It's very difficult to get your hands on any of those and the newer versions unfortunately don't work. So we are coming up with our own completely in-house solution for uh, printing labels that should work with basically any of the brands out there so that you can use like Dymo, Zebra or Brother or anything like that um, and we'll give you more control over designing those labels and everything too. So um, well, one thing actually I even just learned about it recently is that there, there's even going to be the option to add like uh, your product picture or something like that on there as well too, which which I think is very cool and I know I've had people ask about before too. So, um, so yeah, it's it's looking pretty cool and uh, that's a great question. So. And actually, Phil, maybe what we can do is uh, we can show everyone how to get to this page from the marketing uh, website just in case. Uh, but of course, you can always Google it. So if you just Google Inflow Cloud roadmap, you should probably get to it, but it's actually at the very bottom. So if you scroll all the way from, uh, if you just go to inflowinventory.com, scroll to the bottom under support, it'll be the second from the bottom. So we've got oh, yeah. the roadmap there. So that would be the easy way to do that. You can also check out, check out our release notes under the product column there um, in case you wanted to see what just went out yeah. as well. So. And this you can also filter by uh, new features and then the different platforms and stuff too. So if you want to see um, what has come out for when and everything like that too, just to make it easier. So, cool. All right, our next question is from Mary here. Um, how can I run a report for customer locations of where serialized products are located? Uh, so this is uh, an interesting question. Um, and we're, we'll see if we can figure it out uh, live, but some sometimes these sort of questions are um, might take a bit more digging on our end, but it, I'm, I'm not sure from, from what it sounds like, a customer report for customer locations of where serialized products are located. So sounds like an inventory yeah. report. Like you might be, you might have set up your database locations uh, by your customers is what I'm, is what I'm guessing. Um, just trying to think what would even include, it may actually be easier depending on what you're trying to get um to grab from the current stock i think depending what you're looking for specifically but um if you go to inventory current stock um there's an option on here where you can either show the serial numbers of your products or hide them um and then this gives you basically all of your um inventory as well as stuff that's not in stock um but you can filter it by locations um, I don't know if I have any serialized stuff right now, to be honest. Uh, I don't think I do, but you can filter this. And then uh, a nice thing that you can actually do is if you right click on this, this header row here where it's in kind of the bold, you can actually export this um, information that you've get on here um, to a CSV file. Uh, so that would almost be like a, a roundabout way of getting like a different type of report or anything like that. Um, uh, otherwise, though, uh, we can definitely reach out to you, Mary, and if you can give maybe a little more information on um, how you're using like your your customer and locations and stuff like that, we might be able to find there may be an actual report that you could pull as well, too. Well, let's see here. The next question there here is from Tom. It sounds like maybe a troubleshooting question. Um, we could not set up other sublocations during our free trial run. Um, this 
Might be. I think what's going on here is with the web app, the way that sublocations are added um, is a bit different from our uh, Windows desktop app. Um, so let's see here. So in the web app, um, so if you are looking to track your, your inventory in uh, locations and sublocations, you can set up your main locations in your um, yeah, in the inventory tab of your settings or the options. Um, and yeah, you, there are all those main locations. Um, there is a little check mark at the top there um, where it says break locations down into sublocations. Obviously, you want to have that checked off if you do want the sublocations. And I believe by default it is checked off for new trials. Um, but to actually add those sublocations, you'll do that from the product uh, screen. Uh, this is a little bit different from our Windows app. So if you do have our Windows desktop app, you're probably used to something a bit different. Um, but yeah, if you click into that there, um, and then Phil, maybe you can uh, demo this and walk through it. Sure. But, uh, um, yeah. but yeah, basically with your quantity on with your products themselves, you'll see these little drop down arrows. Um, so we're seeing the quantity here, but this could actually be coming. So like, for instance, this um, for my Rockstar Energy uh, in my Toronto location, I see that I have three. But if I click down, it's actually one is in an unknown or two, sorry, is in an unknown, lo like unnamed location. And one is in um, sub location aisle one. Um, and from here, this is where then you can actually add like extra sub locations. So it will show you the existing ones that you've already added to uh, that location. So if I just quickly needed to add something else to, to bin five or something like that, I could increase the, the quantity there. Or if I needed to add something completely new, I'd be able to type it in and it could be um, aisle six or something like that. Um, hit that little plus button um, and then it'll uh, it'll save it in there. And again, you can kind of save that stock or anything like that. Um, and yeah, that, that would be how you get if, it. Yeah, and if you do have access to a Windows computer and you um, and you want to download the, the Windows app, the locations are a bit uh, different. So you'll just go into your option settings and then um, I think we'll get uh, the under the track inventory by, uh, you'll want to click on manage inventory location. So it's a bit different. Um, and there's an edit sublocations button there. Um, I'm going through this a bit fast, but it's all on our web app, uh, sorry, on our uh, knowledge base as well. So if you're uh, unsure of the steps, you can go onto our support knowledge base and type in how to add sublocations or something along the lines of that, and you'll get the steps. Um, but uh, you can add all of your sublocations in the desktop app in one place. So it's a bit different. Um, if you guys have strong feelings about this or any thoughts, you can always reach out to us and let us know. Uh, what you'd, uh, any, any, you know, feedback you have um, about how to add sub locations and we'll obviously take that back to the product team, but for now, that's how you'd be adding it. Um, hopefully that helps explain why you weren't able to add the sub locations. Um, if you still have trouble, please reach out to our support team um, and they'll be able to help um, in real time if you're uh, chatting with them, for example. For sure. Um... All right. Cool. So I think Bobby had the next one. I'm in with the city of Laporte and looking for a good method of tracking our street signs and software and barcodes. Oh, uh, so that may not be as much of a question. Sorry, maybe it's just more of a statement. Um, I, I mean, definitely Inflow would be able to help with that kind of stuff. Um, we have lots of, it's kind of made to be very general that it can work with a lot of different industries. So um, definitely reach out to anyone on our sales team and they can kind of do like a demo with you, walk you through um, kind of a, a few different ways of doing things and uh, they can kind of go over your, your possible workflow and stuff like that with you. So. All right, and then we've got uh, Tom here. So when we purchase our plan today, will our work be saved? That's a really great question. So yeah, the the answer to that is yes. So if as long as you are uh, logged into the same account that you've been uh, on trial, um, you'll be able to just uh, upgrade your trial to a subscription and your data will be just the same as it was before. Um, and if you do need to change the email, let's say you're using a dummy email just for the trial, you can do that in your personal uh, settings as well. Yeah. same account i believe it just shows up under when you go in into your personal stuff you can click in and you can actually just click in and edit your email essentially right in there as well as change your password and stuff so yes and then we've got um, another question here from today 
So is Mac version of the program coming anytime soon? Um, yeah, so uh, the, the company essentially a couple years back decided that they weren't going to build a Mac only version of it. Um, uh, even as it is the Windows version, we're not updating as much as we used to or anything because it is a little bit of a more outdated look. It's uh, it's harder to work with this. Pushing updates to it requires a lot more, and you have to deal with like downloading and installing and everything like that. Um, so essentially, moving forward, the biggest changes are going to come to so the web app here that we have, so app.inflowinventory.com. Um, and here, this is where we're trying to get all these the, the missing features that we have in the Windows app into here because anybody anywhere can absolutely access this so on a mac on linux and windows um, and so this should hopefully be your um, be all end all kind of best spot to access your, your inventory management um, and then i mean again this you could even access on like a tablet or something like that uh, or on a laptop when you're away you don't have to install you don't have to worry about um, any of that extra kind of like troubleshooting or issues or anything like that so um, so instead of making specific versions this is going to be the one that everyone can use. Yeah. Cool. And I guess our next question here is from Macedo. So I have Inflow installed on my iPhone, but I can't search all of the oldest sales uh, orders. How can I configure it to have all this information? So that's a really good question as well. Um, you should be able to, as far as I know, to search the oldest sales orders. Do I have that right, Phil? Um, I believe so. I don't think I'm just pulling it up on my phone right now, but um, sales orders. It should be like our web app that essentially when you start scrolling down, it would just continue loading more. Um, and we do have like a smart search. So when you're, I'll just show on the web app here, but when you are searching in here, this field will be searching same on the mobile app across um, all orders so it shouldn't matter how old or anything like that is um, on the the mobile itself you can there's a little filter button at the bottom left where you can filter it based off of um, like order dates um, ship dates invoice dates uh, as well as like statuses and stuff like that so um, if they are older you can definitely filter by one of those dates uh, or again if you're looking for like all unfulfilled or something like that you should be able to do that as well um, and uh, and yeah I mean otherwise if it's uh, if it's not actually coming up like if you know there is stuff and it's not coming up definitely reach out to us let us know and we can uh, we can definitely help look into that. Um, so you can reach us from the website or just email support at inflowinventory.com and we can definitely help you take a look at that. Yeah, the only thing that might be that's coming to mind is that, that we do have a, um, a dedicated picking uh, screen on our mobile app. So I'll see if I can show you guys this here, but um, probably, probably too small, <laughs> but just in, yeah. Oh, I tried. But in the main menu, uh, what you'll notice is that we've got a sales order screen and we also have a pick sales orders screen. So the pick sales order screen allows you to see all of your open sales orders or, or uh, sales orders that haven't been uh, completely picked yet um, so that you have sort of an action oriented um, view um, and you can start picking only the things that need to be picked. Um, and then we've got our sales order screen, which is our main screen, and you're going to be able to see and search through all of your sales orders. So these include completed sales orders. So just make sure that you're on the sales orders, uh, the, the dedicated sales order screen uh, to see all of your sales orders. But yeah, again, as, as Phil mentioned, if you're still having trouble, reach out to us and we can have a look. Cool. Um, I see Stephanie had asked uh, under product list, I'm able to select additional filters. I'm just pulling it up here. It helps a lot, but each time I come to this page, the filters are reinitialized and I need to select again. Um, is there a way to save this type of setting? So using the web app, unfortunately, no, there isn't a way to save these settings. Um, we do feel your pain with that and I, I do understand. Um, Definitely, we will send that in as more feedback because I know a lot of people I think would, would find that useful. Currently, if you do have a Windows computer um, and you do install the, uh, the Windows app here, 
this product list here would actually save and remember the, the different choices that you have, uh, as well as like sales orders and everything like that. Um, so this is again, a, a feature that we hope that we can bring to the web, but um, kind of as the old saying goes, the, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. So the more people that request something or complain about something or anything like that, constructive uh, criticism, we hope, kind of thing, but um, it kind of pushes it up on the list of uh, features that we know um, our customers want, because as much as there are some things that we would love to build, uh, we're a small team, and if it's not going to help a lot of people, then it may be better to prioritize time in other places kind of thing. So um, it, it's definitely a difficult balancing act, but we appreciate it. So uh, so yeah, definitely send in that feedback, and uh, again, we'll we'll... Uh, kind of upvote it one for that. And, and if anyone else wants that, uh, again, send it in and we can definitely uh, record all of that. Cool. And the uh, next question here is from Leia. So how do you receive a partial order for a specific item? So for example, two out of five were shipped. So um, yeah, there's uh, you can do partial shipment uh, from all apps, um, from all of our apps. Um, and uh, just to show you here from, I guess, the Windows app, and I, I believe, oh, I guess, sorry, yep, that's purchase order, I guess, yeah, received. Um, but yeah, just from the um, the uh, Windows app here, the flow is going to be the same across all of our apps, but you'll notice um, that in the Windows app, as well as the web app, there are those tabs along the bottom. So you've got purchase, receive, return, and stock. So those are your progress trackers. Um, as you continue to receive your products, you can add them to the receive tab, and Inflow will add them to stock as soon as you've received, uh, as soon as they've been added to the receive tab. So, um, for example, uh, Phil here has received two of this uh, product RS new, um, and yeah, just on the main purchasing tab, you'll see an overview of everything that's on the order and what's been received so far. So we'll have an open circle. That means you're still awaiting to receive this item. The closed circle means you've received it. So yeah, and I guess another quick way to receive an item is just to click on that little uh, circle and mark it as received. Um, and that will receive it in. But you'll notice that there's two separate lines now for the same, for the same product. Um, and they're separated by receive status. And that way, um, when you do receive the other one, you can actually have different receive dates for these as well. And um, Inflow is very date oriented, so it will track based off of like when you actually had it to tell you when you had it in stock and everything like that, too. Um, so, yeah. It'll be the same thing with uh, sales orders as well. So if you're partially picking an order, again, there'll be separate tabs. Uh, it'll be the fulfill tab this time. Um, and same thing with shipping. So if you do include shipping on your, your sales orders, you'll have a separate ship tab um, and you can track only the items that, been, that have been shipped or fulfilled so far. Um, these are also where you can specify which sublocation to pick or receive to. Um, you can modify the pick date as well or the receive date. Um, so th this uh, is a bit more uh, of the details um, on, the, on the orders. Uh, same thing on our mobile app. Um, and if you have any trouble finding how to partially pick or receive an item on, on any of our apps, just go on to our support knowledge base. We have steps for each one of our apps. They do obviously vary a little bit um, in, in their steps, but uh, that'll be the best way to, to learn about, about that is just on our knowledge base. All right. Um, so I see a lot of questions coming in, so and time just keeps flying. So I guess we'll try and kind of speed through some of these. But uh, as Stephanie had asked uh, regarding manufacturing, that it would be easier to enter bill of material by SKU instead of product name. That's great feedback. And uh, again, because we are kind of working on that on the web app right now, that's uh, fantastic feedback. So we will record that and pass that um, along to the team. Um, the, the only thing that I can say, too, is that uh, I know it's a little bit more of a workaround, but if you hit this little show search at the bottom, you can then search by different um, uh, fields as well. So, I mean, it, it's it's still like an extra step, but um, if you have to actually find it rather than knowing what the product name is, you can do that as well. Uh... Great. The next question here is from Lisa. Um, this is a great question because we are currently working on designing our mobile count, count sheets. So great, great question. Um, we do a weekly visual inventory on some items used for production, so screws, nails, 
cetera. Is there a way to scan these items to a list as I'm going through the warehouse to an ordering list? Um, I see. So basically, um, not count sheets, but it uh, sounds like you are doing a, a count and then creating a, a purchase order for your vendors or suppliers to order more of the item. Um, yes, you absolutely can do this using our mobile app. So our mobile app does have the purchase order feature where you can create purchase orders directly from the mobile app and use the cameras, uh, sorry, the smart, your, your smartphone's camera to scan the barcodes uh, onto into the product uh, purchase order, sorry. Uh, just make sure that if you don't have your barcode set up in Inflow yet, you have to do that first before you create a purchase order. Um, and again, we do have that all on our support knowledge base. Um, so uh, feel free to check that out or reach out to us over chat. Um, if you have any more questions about that. Okay. Um, so the next one from Mark, um, stuff about the API. Um, definitely, Mark, we, we can set up a time that I can um, try and talk to you or your engineer. Um, again, I'm not a developer myself, so my knowledge on the API is limited, but I can definitely try and answer any questions or um, usually the easiest thing if you have specific questions about the API or any of that more technical stuff, if, if you compile them into Word or Excel or anything or just a list and then you send it into us, then uh, if we need uh, feedback from other departments or other, anything like that, we can always get that and kind of send it all to you at, uh, right away. Um, but yeah, if, if you want to submit a ticket, um, just uh, in, so, sorry, support at inflowinventory.com. Um, just again, mention in there my name and that, that you wanted to call and we can definitely try and schedule something in. Well, the next uh, question here uh, is from Craig. Is there a report that can be filtered by sublocation only? Um, I'm not sure, but we can try the inventory details report. So the inventory details report, um, you can, there's that sublocation filter. Let's see. Um, but you would need to still select a location, I guess, because otherwise sublocations won't exist. Yes. Yeah, so we've got, the inventory details report. Um, however, um, Phil did touch on a really cool screen that we have in the uh, desktop app um, called the current stock screen. Uh, so if you go to the inventory current stock, it just gives you a list of all of your products and the quantities you have in stock and the location information. So you'll see the location column there, the sublocation as well. You'll be able to filter this list again by location and sublocation. You can also export um, I think any table you, you see from the desktop app into a CSV file, a spreadsheet. Um, so if you do need the raw data, you've got that there. You just right click on the column headers and export it to, uh, to a spreadsheet. Um, but try out the inventory details report, see if that'll do it. Um, and if you're still having trouble finding what you're looking for, reach out to the support team um, and uh, we'll be able to get more information about exactly the things you're looking for. For sure. Um, cool. So I see Anne had a question. We'd like to be able to see two tabs at the same time. Is there a way to pop out a tab? There appears to be a hundred line item limit on the order history tab. Is there a way to see more if you create a work order? Okay, sorry. So there's a bunch of questions. So, um, so, so depending on what you're looking at to pop out a tab so in the windows app you can just click this little plus button and then select a different screen or anything if you are in something like a, a sales order let me pull it up here my internet is going to agree or i, I can do it from here too if you click on a product if you see this little kind of like box with an arrow um that is like a way to open up just that specific um product so it's i was looking at 3mm 3m33 it's now pulling that one up here kind of thing and it opened in another tab so you can view certain things like that um so that is possible and you, again you can do that from like sales orders pretty much anywhere you select a product um so there are a few kind of shortcuts like that otherwise yeah just clicking the plus button and then selecting a different area um, from the and, des desktop app you can't have uh, i think she was looking to see if you can see two tabs at the same time like next uh, to each other but yeah, Windows app, unfortunately not. But if you're using the web app, you absolutely can because it's browser based. So you can definitely uh, use the window, uh, sorry, the web app for that. Yeah. So yeah, you could pull it up and then have Windows um, specifically separate them for you kind of thing. 
Um, in terms of the order history, so both the movement history and the order history do have a limit on how far back you can go. Um, I, I believe you are correct. It's around 100 lines. Um, if you need to go further back than this, you would have to run a report to get that information. So um, again, we have uh, pretty much all the information that you can get from Inflow in here, and then you could either filter it by dates and different things like that. So in terms of like a, an order history or a movement history, you'd be looking at probably things like the um, inventory inventory movement summary or details report. So those will give you similar information. If you're looking for like sales information, you'd have to do one of like our sales orders. And then um, again, you can filter these by specific product. So you could get just only the information for that one product. Um, and that won't have any limit on how many lines it can go back. Um, and then if you create a work order from a sales order, why doesn't it transfer the information from the sales order? Um, I'm not sure what kind of information you would want, I guess, transferred from a, a sales order to a work order. Um, it'll obviously put in the, the correct product. Um, if there are specific other fields that you think should copy over, again, we can definitely submit that as feedback. Um, we would just need uh, a little more information. So if you wanted to send that in, um, we can definitely record it and pass that along. Um, the next question here is from Astrid. So can you print or save or export the dashboard reports? A great question. Um, you can't export uh, the dashboard reports uh, directly, but you can run similar reports to and, and get the data that we show uh, on the dashboard. Uh, we actually have a specific knowledge base article exactly for this. Uh, so if you're uh, running a specific dashboard, um, you can, uh, we, we have steps on our knowledge base on how to configure a specific report to get that same information, and then you can export that report. Um, so maybe, uh, Phil, maybe you can show the dashboard very quickly just so that everyone can see what the question's about. So uh, on the Windows uh, app, we do have a dashboard. Hopefully this will come to, to web at some, some point, uh, but these, this sort of data that you see here, you can't export it directly from this screen, but you can run um, an, a report that will get you that same information. Um, so uh, what I'd recommend is just going on our knowledge base. And then, uh, yeah, so here's the, uh, here's that knowledge base article. Thanks, Bill. And I'll paste it in the chat now too. Sorry, if James has already done it, I'm staying higher in the list. So I, ha I haven't seen uh, if he's already gotten to it, but. Um, but yeah, this actually then shows you kind of so the what the dashboard is showing and then kinds of the things that you could do to um, run to to get similar information. Yeah, cool. So, so we've got that on our knowledge base. Um, OK, next one is from Michael here. Can you add QR codes to each inventory item or is it only barcodes? That's a great question. Um, I believe from, I, I believe you can add QR codes using the the mobile app. Is that correct? Do I have that right? Um, Sorry, QR codes? Yeah, so can you add QR codes to each inventory item or is it only barcodes, I guess the 2D or 1D, sorry, 1D barcodes? Yeah, so I mean, essentially the, the app itself can, like the camera scanning app or the smart scanner can read QR codes. Um, essentially QR codes will still just um, it include like a piece of information, which is the same as like um, like a barcode or anything. The the thing with QR codes is that you can include multiple pieces of information, which um, our system would not understand. So if you were using a QR code and it only had one piece of information you could use that at like a barcode um, but our system itself cannot generate bar um, qr code sorry so you would have to use like an outside software or something like that create your qr codes then get that specific number to the the code and put it in the bar barcode field of inflow um, so it could still read it and recognize it but again you can't kind of take advantage of the the extras that qr codes um, can provide yeah. And just to clarify, for barcodes and inflow, really, it's it, you're just saving a barcode number, and it just acts like uh, another product name. So, the, yeah, the only information you're really um, saving to that barcode number is, is the barcode number itself. Uh, QR codes sometimes you can 
save location information and, and, and other yeah pieces of data. But in Inflow, it's really, it's pretty simple. It's as simple as it gets really. Um, yep. Yes. Ooh. Um, so, uh, I know Tanae had another comment here just saying that she was, uh, that inflow pay is not available in Europe, uh, and that she started using showroom for her clients, but they can't pay online. Um, that, that is great feedback and inflow pay is still something a, a bit newer with us. So we are hoping to roll it out to other locations as we can make it available kind of thing, but this will definitely help, uh, again, kind of upvote that. So hopefully it can get done sooner than some other things. Um, so the next question here, hopefully I didn't uh, skip over any, and if I did, please reach out to us. Um, so this one's from Alex. When will you update Dymo integration for the new 550 printer um, using Dymo Connect? Uh, so this is a really good question. So uh, Dymo has, uh, which is currently the only printer that we integrate with, um, they've recently updated their, their uh, support for their label uh, software. Uh, the one that Inflow works with, so that's just uh, Dymo label version 8, I believe. Um, that one's no longer supported by Dymo. Um, and Dymo Connect, uh, we don't, is not compatible with, with Inflow. Um, I'm not sure if it, it will ever be able to be compatible just by the way that they've set up their software. So um, unfortunately, we won't be um, updating the Dymo integration, but as Phil mentioned previously, we are working on um, a new labels project where you'll be able to connect or um, integrate with, uh, I guess, like a wide range of different printers. So you're not stuck with just Dymo. Um, and I will it still, I'm not sure, but will it still work with Dymo 450s? And It will, yeah. So essentially it's almost like, um... It's it's making it more similar to just like printing, like how you would print a regular like page or anything like that, like a web page, a Word document, like anything like that, where you can then just kind of customize the layout. It tr creates it just based off of the the size that you specify, um, and then you can send it to pretty much any printer that you want. So as long as you have the correct size, it should come out properly. So um, so yeah, so the old 450s will work, the 550s, anything will. Um, Essentially, just yeah, with Dymo Connect, they removed that reference field, so we just we couldn't pass that information anymore. Yeah, and just for like a little bit of a progress update on that project, we are in the testing phase. Um, there's still lots and lots to test. You guys can imagine we're testing with a, like many many different printers, so um, it it is past design, which is great. So it'll hopefully come out soon. Um, no ETA on that, uh, but it's in testing, which is great. Um, all right, next question here. Uh, Lisa, will we eventually be able to add attachments to purchase order orders in the cloud version like we can on the on-premise version? Um, so yeah, so I, I believe that is another thing that I've heard um, talked about. Um, thankfully with cloud, the storage is uh, is easier, I guess, to manage than uh, with like any of like the desktop software. Um, so it is something that they're, they're hoping to bring, but again, it's kind of one of those projects that um, it's, it's planned, but it's not, uh, I guess, in development right now or anything. So kind of the more people that request those kinds of things, then um, then hopefully it'll get done sooner than later. Cool. And I think the next question here is from Vazirath. So there is an option on purchase orders to do a returned item. Is there any report that can print that item separately? It's a good question. Um, I know... If you're doing like the inventory movement ones, you can um, filter by purchase order, uh, or sorry, um, is it from a purchase order? PO returned items? Yeah, so like a purchase order unstock. So this would be when you're taking it out of your inventory because you've um, returned it back to the vendor. Um, so this kind of uh, reports, uh, I believe, both the inventory movement um, summary and the in inventory movement details will both give you the, um, that type, yeah, sorry, transaction type where you can do like the purchase order unstock. Um, this would also work for sales orders if you're um, restocking a product. So after it's been returned and you're putting it back on the shelf kind of thing that you can see that. Um, otherwise, I don't believe there are any other reports that show just specifically like refunded items, unless you can think of any, Danny, off the top of your head. 
No, I think that's it. I think unfortunately that's the only only reports, the two reports that can do that. Um, so then the next one was from Mary. Uh, can you have multiple email recipients for customers to receive showroom invitations under the same customer? Um, so no, you would not be able to, you can't have multiple in showroom, um, multiple email addresses under like one specific person. Um, but there's no limit to the amount of people that you can invite. So you could invite as many people as you want. Um, and you can also copy. Um, so if you're, you want to give multiple people the same access or anything like that, if I wanted to have another person have the same access as myself here, you hit copy settings and then you can invite either if they're already in your inflow system or just invite with their email. Uh, and this will then use those exact same access settings. Um, so you don't have to, to fill out everything that you might have already done on there. Yeah, and essentially with these private showrooms, what you're doing is you're creating a, a private link. So it's just a URL um, that somebody uses to, uh, let's say, access the showroom and log in with the email and password. So if this is something you're trying to, um, I guess, share with uh, lots of different people, like set up a single showroom that multiple people can access, um, they can just log in with the same, um, email and password, but I guess that, that might not work actually. Never mind, that might not work in terms of like knowing who's uh, who's ordering what. But yeah, I think how Bill mentioned, you can copy the settings to quickly generate multiple of those uh, same showroom settings. That's probably the way to go. Um, I see Tanae had another one. Is there a way to include photos of items when you print a pick list from the sales order? So unfortunately at this time there isn't. Um, that That is again something that um, could be possible in the future, but we'll have to record that as feedback and, and pass it along to the team. All right, the and next question I here, I guess it's from Stefan. So regarding work orders, is this possible to complete Partially, so 200 units to be manufactured and only do 100 um, at a time. And that's a great question. Um, from a specific work order, right now you can't partially uh, complete a work order. The reason for this is uh, Inflow will only add the finished product to stock once you've completed the order. So, um, so unfortunately, no. But what you can do, and I think Phil's getting to this, uh, exactly this, um, is that you can actually split work orders by finished product. So um, maybe we can demo this here. So yeah, it looks like there's uh, two of the same finished products on this work order. And for people um, who are watching and are like, what are work orders? Uh, these, this is just a feature that we have uh, to help uh, track products that you manufacture. Um, you can learn more about it on our website, on our support knowledge base. Um, yeah, maybe Phil looks like you might be going Indeed. through this here. Yeah, so if you right click on the, the finished product itself, you can um, choose to, uh, now it's not going to because I only have one, but um, it was showing there before to split based off of the, the finished products, um, which has then actually, so I still have the same work order number, but essentially it's added a dash one and a dash two, and I've now got them on two separate work orders. Um, so if I'm still waiting on parts or anything like that from one of these, so this one I've got everything, I can complete my order. This one, I, I don't have anything picked yet, so I could leave this one open. Um, and now this, uh, finished product had actually been added to my inventory right away uh, while this one is still open. Yes, and all the steps, because we went through this bit quickly, uh, if you go to our knowledge base, the article is called How to Partially Complete a Work Order, and it'll go through the steps on how to do this. Um, so, yeah, take a look, and if you can't find it, reach out to us, and we'll be able to point you in the right direction. Cool. Um, so Isabel was saying that it's her first time working with Inflow and that uh, is it possible to draw on a PO and have three signatures? Um, so at this point, unfortunately, we don't have any kind of like signature integration or anything like that. Um, so you could print out like a document or save it as like a PDF and then send it off to somebody and have them sign on it. Um, you could 
create like a custom document and try and like leave space for that. Um, but uh, unfortunately, at, at this time right now, we don't really have like any like super clean, super easy way of of adding signatures to a to a document or anything like that. So anything you do would be kind of like a workaround. Okay, and the next question here is from Michael. Uh, so um, he's wondering about the connection between the API and Azure. So if you're looking to connect to our public API, um, so you, you won't have access to the to the SQL database or anything like that, but you'll always have to go through our, our public API. Um, so what I would recommend here, we've probably already seen it, but we have the our API documentation online. So you'll be able to see the sort of, um, data that you can pull. And yeah, Phil's just in here. Uh, so if you Google Inflow Cloud API, you can also get to it from our support knowledge base, but uh, maybe you can go through this a bit better, Phil. Sure, yeah. Uh, I mean, essentially, just to, to keep it quick, um, the API is just a quick layer in between the database and um, any program or anything that you want to use to, to try and communicate with it. Um, it can let you get all the information brought out of it. So anything like your customers, your locations, um, products, sales orders, you can take the information out, put it back in um, just by using specific uh, queries that you're going to send uh, through whatever program or app or anything like that that you're going to be using. Um, the, uh, unfortunately, there's no real connection between it and Azure or anything like that. So you're not getting direct um, database connection or anything like that. So it's it's just um, these are the available uh, queries, essentially, that you can put in kind of thing or requests, sorry. Uh, and you can't really, it's not like creating like a database query or anything like that, unfortunately. So. And yeah, feel free to reach out to us with specific questions about the API and we can see if we can point you in the right direction. For sure. And the next uh, question here is from Emmanuel. So is there any way we can set reports to be downloaded automatically every given time, like daily, weekly, or weekly? You can do this with the API, I suppose, right? Uh, the public API, if you wanted to create sort of, uh, if you're looking for specific data uh, that you'd like to be pulled, um, but currently, uh, no, the short answer is no, you can't set up reports to automatically download. Um, right now, that's definitely been a, a requested feature, so we will log that. Um, the, the, I guess the, the closest thing, again, would probably be the API. Um, so you'd have to build out your own sort of queries, what you want to pull out, and you could set up, obviously, it, be completely custom in that sense. Um, other thing, um, maybe Phil, you, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we could do, you could also set up um, Zapier, right? Um, to pull certain information. Actually, no. it, it can get pieces of information and stuff. Unfortunately, Zapier right now doesn't have um, anything with the reports or anything like that. So it, it probably wouldn't be a, a workable solution at the moment. Okay. Um, so yeah, so right. just, um, I, I'm gonna toss it. So it's 12 o'clock, we're, we're only All supposed right. to run for an hour kind of thing. Um, but so I, I'm gonna have to say, we're, we're probably gonna have to stop um, accepting questions. We'll try and go through a few more here. We are gonna do the uh, the prize draw soon. So I don't know if James, you wanna grab everyone's uh, information and stuff and get that ready and we can, uh, we can do that soon. So we'll go through a few more questions that we can right now. And uh, and again, anyone that we can't answer or anything, we'll try and get back to uh, through email, hopefully today, um, depending uh, how many are left, because I still see a lot of messages <laughs> down below. Um, so yeah, I see Teresa had asked, how can you use barcodes when our products all have individual lot numbers? Um, so barcodes themselves are only referencing an actual product. They don't have anything to do with like the location associated with them. So when you scan a barcode uh, into like a, a sales order or purchase order or anything, it'll pull up the actual product itself. Um, but when fulfilling it, if, if it has to come from a specific um, area or anything like that, that's when you go under like this fulfill tab and you can actually change to like the location, the sub location. So that would probably be where your lot number is or anything like that. Um, the, the barcodes unfortunately are only going to bring up this actual product they're, they're not coded for each like location or anything like that cool and yes our next question here is from jack 
Can we customize our default compose email for each supplier we send an email to? Um, so I have some French, English, and Spanish suppliers. Uh, this is a great question and actually really great feedback. Uh, Unfortunately, right now you can't customize the 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 email um, template. That's definitely on our road. I think that's on our roadmap. At least it it it's been talked about quite a bit. Um, I don't know that it's coming out anytime soon, if at all. But definitely requested a lot. Um, it's great to know exactly how you'd use your templates. I love that you know you have different languages that you need. So there's definitely a use case for having a customized template, but yeah, right now you can't customize it, but we're going to log that uh, as a feature request for sure. Um, right. I see James said, is it possible to run an item order history based on shipping locations? So we have several Baptist hospitals we ship to, so could I run a breakdown of products based upon the zip code? Mm -hmm. um, I think that would I mean, it depends on how you're, so like, as long as you're doing these as like sales, um, most likely something like the sales by product details, I think you'd be able to, you can um, have like location on the report. Um, so in here you, oh no, this is going to be talking about info location, sorry. Um, customer. Hmm. Uh, maybe this report wouldn't. Uh, product customer report. The shipping um, location. Um, yeah, we may have to take sure. a look to see what what might be possible. It might be something. It probably one of these like customer order history ones or something like that, where I think these you can actually get into like addresses. Um, but we'll have to. We'll probably have to take a look. Sure. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Um, but when we we have a couple tools and stuff, we can take a look to try and find a report that might that might match. Yeah. Next uh, question here. Um, again, so we are actually in the report area. Um, this is from Stefan again. So when asking for stocks in a specific location, the report includes all lines with zero quantities. Is this possible to report only to to only have one quantity uh, above one quantity references? So um, basically, hide all stock. Uh, of zero and below on the, I guess the inventory report, let's see, oh no. For inventory by location, I guess. Oh yeah, uh, if, it, if it's the inventory by location report, that there is like a little toggle here where you should be able to um, uncheck so that you don't show the, the ones with zero quantities and it should only show stuff that has either a positive or a negative. Um, and that if you were to actually uh, include that, that would then give you all of your your products, whether they had stock or not. Yeah. Um, all right, let's maybe do two two more questions. And then um, we'll we'll do the draw. If James, how are you doing on on your end? Draw is ready whenever you guys are. All right, let's do the last two questions then. And then obviously we we see we have a lot more messages to go through. So we'll be going through them after the webinar. Um, and um, if you did sign up for the webinar with your email, um, we'll be able to reach out. If, if you don't hear from us, please do reach out to our support team um, just over live chat or email. We'd be happy to help. Um, all right, so we've got a question here from Tom. So. Uh, we were assuming that during the free trial, we could not add additional locations so we could practice moving stock. Uh, are we correct? Um, so the free trial actually does allow you to add as many locations or sublocations as you want. Um, so while you're testing things out. Um, so if you do have any trouble again, adding the locations, please re reach out to us. Uh, one caveat here is that if you do decide to um, sign up with our entrepreneur plan, that one only comes with one location and no sublocations. Um, if you currently have multiple locations set up in your trial account, you're just going to need to deactivate those locations first so that you just have one location and then you'll be able to sign up for our uh, entrepreneur account. Um, again, if you have any trouble with that, reach out to us. We have some error messages um, letting you know what to do um, if you do run into any trouble, but reach out to our support team if you have any trouble with the trial um, or um, adding locations.
All right, and our last question here for the day, can sublocations not disappear when the quantity becomes zero? This is a great question. <laughs> We've heard it before and uh, it's been logged as a feature request, um, but currently the way um, sublocations work uh, is that they will disappear from your product uh, details screen if you don't have any, um, any product in that location. Um, there are some reasons for this. Um, if you don't have any any stock, then it it might be a bit redundant to show um, all the sublocations that once held stock in the past. Um, so sublocations are meant to be more transient, so they will change over time. So it's it's a bit. It, there are reasons why we didn't do it, but we are, are keeping track of these um, these requests. So the more people ask for it, the, the higher the chance we'll actually implement it. But um, yeah, reach out with, to us if you have any concerns about that or any additional feedback you'd like to, or, or contacts you'd like to uh, like us to know, um, that'll help give it some traction. Cool. Um, and just quickly, because I saw James had a good uh, question that he answered here, and we can do pretty quickly, but um, it had been asked, uh, how can you use a deactivated product's name? Um, so if I, for instance, take this, oops, this product here, and I were to deactivate it, um, it'll put it in there. If I wanted to make a new one and I go to put it, it's already saying that this product name is in use and that I can't no longer use it. Um, so this is a great thing that a lot of people will run into. What you need to do in that kind of a situation is actually change the deactivated product's name. Um, so in this case, I need to reactivate it, but I could change it to anything like and just add like deactivated onto that product name itself. So now when I go to create a new one, I can put it in and I no longer have an error and I can use it. Um, so again, just a really quick and easy tip um, that uh, this would work the same for customers, sales orders, uh, anything like that, that has to be unique. Um, so you can do that. And uh, yeah, again, we've kind of run over time here. And so we want to uh, thank everyone for coming in and participating. We know that there are still questions in the chat there. We are going to, uh, after the webinar is done, go through them. And again, we have email addresses and stuff so we can reach out to you and try and answer any of those questions for you. Um, again, you can always reach out to us at support at inflowinventory.com. Um, or from our website itself, there's a contact us page and everything. And uh, again, we do like live chat um, Monday to Friday as well. And that's probably the fastest way to get an answer from us too. So um, we love talking to you all. We love the feedback. Um, Again, kind of just a quick plug that November's webinar is going to be on the Smart Scanner 3, which you can find out more information at uh, infloshop.com. Um, and uh, again, I believe pre-orders are up for it already, shipping soon. So um, stay tuned to that. And uh, yeah, again, thank you, everyone. I don't know if, Danny, if you have anything, parting words that you want to say? No, yeah, this is this has been really fun. It's been a while since I've done a webinar. So this was great. Thank you, Phil. And thank you, James. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. So we'll see you guys uh, in about a month. Yeah. Thank All you. right. Well, I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. And uh, we will talk to you again soon. Take care. Bye.